You know, Northwestern last season closed with eight straight victories. That's right, eight straight. And a big reason why they were able to win the close games. They went 6-0 and in contests decided by 12 points or less, including three straight overtime wins. The D only gave up 20 points per game. And most of that front seven returns, including Joe Gaziano, who came close to double digits in sacks. Also, you have the luxury of returning Patty Fisher, inside linebacker, who had triple digits in tackles, and Nate Hall at the outside linebacker, 49 stops. So the front seven is set. Secondary, they had the talent. They had two guys that went to the NFL, but the pass defense was terrible, dead last in the Big Ten. So there's an area to watch for is the secondary. Offensively, Clayton Thorson, he's back. Well, we think he's back. The knee hopefully is fine for the Northwestern QB. Torn ACL in last season's Music City Bowl. So all eyes are on him. If he can't go, you're going to have to rely on T.J. Green. Justin Jackson was the most productive running back in Northwestern history, but you have to replace him. Jeremy Larkin, though, his backup, six yards per carry. I think they're going to be all right in this particular area. So look for Northwestern's running game with most of the offensive line returning. And Flynn Nagel, they have him back at wideout. The Northwestern schedule, it's brutal. You open up the season, conference play at Purdue, an up-and-coming team. The next week, Duke. Remember the Blue Devils last year slaughtered Northwestern, but at least you get them in Evanston this time. And then later in the season, Michigan at Michigan State back-to-back. -back. And then the second half of the season, a three-game stretch of Wisconsin, Notre Dame, and at Iowa. Ouch. I don't think there's any way Northwestern, with or without forcing a QB, will be able to repeat a double-digit winning season. I've got the Wildcats finishing fourth. Maryland, Maryland.